TKO Group Holdings, the parent company of WWE. And look, I, I know there are, most of you know what's going on, but there are a few of you out there, and I mean a few, that Wrestling Observer Live is your entire lifeblood to the wrestling business. A lot of you are overseas listening to us on uh, American Forces Radio or you're, you're part of our syndication package and listening to us over the air. But since we last talked to you, other than what I mentioned about the possibility of Slim Jim pulling out, which is a, a recent happening today, there's only really been two notable things about the Vince McMahon story since we last spoke. And that is... TKO Group Holdings, late yesterday, issuing a statement uh, about the whole deal with Janelle Grant, the former WWE employee that is alleging that she was the victim of physical and emotional abuse, sexual assault, and trafficking at WWE uh, in a lawsuit that names McMahon, WWE, and John Laurinaitis as defendants. Um, since we last spoke... A TKO spokesperson issued the following statement to Variety, which responds to Grant's allegations, quote, Mr. McMahon does not control TKO, nor does he oversee the day-to-day -day operations of WWE. While this matter predates our TKO executive team's tenure at the company, we take Ms. Grant's horrific allegations very seriously and are addressing this matter internally, end quote. McMahon was among the TKO representatives present at the New York Stock Exchange this Tuesday when Dwayne The Rock Johnson rang the opening bell. Nick Khan was also there. Paul Levesque was there. Several people from the board were there. Also, since we last spoke to you, a statement also released late last night from a Vince McMahon spokesperson indicates that the TKO executive chairman is going to fight these allegations. The following was released to several media outlets by McMahon's legal team. Quote, this lawsuit is replete with lies, obscene made up instances that never occurred and a vindictive distortion of the truth. He will vigorously defend himself, end quote. So that is the extent of anything new thus far. TKO Group holding stock closed Thursday afternoon at 87.51 a share. It is currently trading at 86.74 right now as we rapidly pull towards the close of the trading day and the trading week on the New York Stock Exchange. So uh, by the time the show is over, we'll have an idea on where that stock is closing. I doubt it's going to drop a whole lot more unless... Uh, the Slim Jim news uh, causes speculation and maybe causes, <clears throat> pardon me, a little bit of a further drop. There is actual wrestling uh, that, that WWE is, is trying to put on uh, this weekend, including live tonight from the Casilla Center in Miami, Florida. The go-home show for Saturday's Royal Rumble. Added earlier today, Solo Sokoa and LA Knight, which is a rematch from the October 13th SmackDown, where Knight defeated Sokoa in the build-up to challenging Reigns for the Universal Roman Reigns for the Universal title. And November's Crown Jewel show, Roman Reigns is going to be defending the Universal title in a four-way on Saturday against Knight uh, AJ Styles. And Randy Orton, I would have uh, figured that this match ends in some sort of schmaz ending here, but I also would have figured that it's going to be the main event of the show. If it's not, the main event of the show will likely be Katana Chance and Caden Carter defending the WWE Women's Tag Team title against the Kabuki Warriors of Asuka and Kairi Sane with Bailey Dakota Kai and Io Sky in their corner. I'm not going to get what I want, which is the Kabuki Warriors winning those titles. No way. You saw the the vignette that was done with Caden and Katana partying it up. No, no, we're, we're going to have them hold on to the titles for a little while. And it will probably be something that Bailey does, which causes the Kabuki Warriors to lose. The pride of Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. Hey, a bunch of lions, I guess. Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. They will have a face-to-face -face with the final testament of Karrion Cross, the authors of Pain, Scarlet, and Paul Ellering. 
Carmelo Hayes and Austin Theory, they're going to try it again. A uh, couple weeks ago, the terrible landing off the seated Spanish fly uh, by uh, Austin Theory, where the two guys clonked heads. Theory was out with uh, in the concussion protocol for a little bit. Hayes' face was busted up a little bit, but everybody ended up okay. They're going to try this thing again tonight on the show. Also announced Carlito with Cruz del Toro, Joaquin Wild, and Zelina Vega in his corner will face off against Santos Escobar, who will have Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo in his corner. So all of this is leading into tomorrow's Royal Rumble from St. Petersburg, Florida at Tropicana Field, the home of Major League Baseball's Tampa Bay Rays. Finished the season so disappointing last year. But that doesn't matter right now. What matters is there's only four matches. And in two of those matches, uh, of the 60 participants, we know 11 of them. And I know a lot of people are annoyed by that, but let, let's be honest here. If they gave you a bunch of names, right, if they, they said, hey, The Miz is in there, and this person and that person and Tozawa and Otis and Ivar and... Okay, they put like 24 people in, and they do the same on the women's side. I mean, honestly, would you really be any more interested in the Royal Rumble? I mean, honestly, would you? Probably not. If you're bitching about this now, you just ain't going to watch that show in all likelihood. But I'm going to watch that show, and I'm a little bit excited about it. I've got predictions, and I'll give them to you when we come back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Sempervivi here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. Just went to the slimgym.com slash WWE, the splash page. That's still up right now. Again, I don't, we'll, we'll find out if Slim Jim is a sponsor come tomorrow. But as of now, still sponsoring the Royal Rumble. Uh, we'll see what happens going forward. We'll see what the, the fallout's going to be. It will be interesting to see who says what and what is what when it comes to advertisers and you know, will they lose? Because I, I see in the Twitch chat, you know, a little talk about, you know, Cricket 5G is, is one of their their big sponsors. And, you know, we've seen commercials with Sheamus and Bianca Belair and Charlotte Flair and all that stuff. We'll see if anybody starts a crusade online or if, if just on their own, some of these sponsors kind of look at the situation and go, OK, you know, we'll, we'll see in a bit here to be real about it. If those sponsors are like the sponsors for UFC, it won't really matter whatsoever because with what happened with Dana White and his wife, with Sean Strickland being Sean Strickland with, you know, a lot for a lot of different reasons that, that one may want to point out. It's not like their sponsors have departed from them. So we'll see what happens here. The stock price is where it is right now, uh, $86.74. Probably not going to vary too much from that. It got its bump about what? It was darn near $15, I believe it was, a couple days ago from where it had stagnated at because of that deal being announced with Netflix and WWE. Seems now to have dropped a little bit and settled in where it's at. It's going to be interesting to see where that stock is going forward as well, too. Again, because the only other chips that are available in play right now would be where UFC resigns, and that may be bigger for the stock. It probably is going to be bigger for the stock than anything that has happened with WWE. I think Wall Street and in general, everybody kind of feels the way they feel about WWE programming, and it didn't matter what their increase was going to be. We got that last bump because it was a lot bigger than expected and, and very flashy, but we'll see when people start to pick it apart because we've already had Dave Meltzer, pick it apart a little bit. We've already had Brandon Thurston, pick it apart a little bit. We've already had other people in the financial sphere pick it apart and go, you know, this may not be as fruitful for a deal for WWE as, you know, in investors may want. It may be good because you're in front of 300 million eyeballs worldwide and you can play up all that sort of stuff. But for the average investor... That may not mean so much, but we'll have to see where the stock ends up going. Hey guys, did you love this clip? 
If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.